episode of Amazing Conversations. I am your host, Andrea Revels, and joining me today, I have a special, a very special young lady who is, of course, close and dear to my heart because she is, uh, not only is she my cousin, but she's my friend. Yes, she <laughs> is. She is my friend, and her name is Teresa Coleman Wash, who is a native of Albany, Georgia, but she is here visiting us from the great city of Dallas, Texas. And I'm not going to take up too much time describing or telling you things about her. I am going to let her tell you herself. So again, how are you, Teresa? I'm doing well. Great, great. <laughs> Listen, thank you again for joining me today. I know you're here for a short time visiting home. Yes. But you carved out some time for your cousin, and mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. So if you would, if you would kind of tell us a little bit about about uh, who you are, um, you know, where you're from, mm -hmm. and what you do. So my name is Teresa Coleman Wash, as you know. I grew up here in Albany. Mm -hmm. When I graduated from Albany State University, I moved okay. to Dallas. I'm sorry, moved to Atlanta. Okay. And was doing a full season of uh, dinner theaters at the Lakewood Playhouse. Well, I joined Antioch Baptist Church North. That's okay. how it got started in okay. theater. And Dr. Cameron Alexander, who's the, the pastor at that time, put me over the, um, the music, art, dance, and theater ministry. Mm -hmm. It's called MAD for Christ. MAD is an acronym for music, art, dance, and theater. Okay. And so... You know, I started using writing plays and just using casting people who were in the other ministries, the uh, housing ministry, the uh, drugs and addiction ministry. I mean, anybody who was willing to work with us, mm -hmm. you know, I would cast them in a play. And, and I remember maybe in the early or late 19... 80s. I was singing in the choir, and the choir director said, "We are going. I want you to be over the the um, the Christmas gathering this year." And I said, "So, what do you expect me to do? Write a play?" He said, "That's a good idea." <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote this skit for the Christmas gathering for the choir, and Reverend Alexander said you should write the second half of that skit. It went over so well. Mm. And so I wrote the second half of the skit. 18 months later, we were on tour with this play that I wrote for, mm. for the church. Mm. Uh, we did a kind of a Southwest Georgia tour. We also went to Chattanooga, actually. Okay. But we went to Savannah, Macon, uh, Chattanooga. We also came to Albany. Mm -hmm. And... It was in one of the city that escapes, maybe Birmingham, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I was bit by then. I I chartered a nonprofit, started mm -hmm. a nonprofit, and I have to tell you that we made a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. and we also lost a lot of money for our promoters. But I had learned a lot, mm -hmm. and I realized something happened when we were on tour. Every Sunday when we would go to, to, when we were on tour, we would go to church, no matter what city we were in. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys in our cast walked down the front of the church and joined, gave his life to Christ. He didn't join that church, uh -huh. but he gave his life to, life to Christ. And I, I knew then that this was so much more bigger than me trying to be a playwright. Mm -hmm. I knew that theater could be an incredibly powerful, transformative ministry. Ministry. Right. And so that's when I decided to chart a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Well, the Alexanders had an old union building, bought an old union, union building mm -hmm. in the Lakewood area of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They transformed it, you know, kind of renovated it, gave me keys and gave me complete autonomy to do whatever I wanted to do with them. Wow. So that's when we started doing dinner theaters, yeah. a full season of dinner theaters. And of course I got married. Yes. <laughs> in 2000, moved to Dallas. And I said to my husband, I said, I want to try this theater thing. Mm -hmm. 
you know, full time because at that time in Atlanta, I was selling broadcast advertising for a Disney company. Okay. And um, so I left uh, Fox 97, got married, moved to Dallas, started doing theater full time. And then um, one of my husband's business partners, mm -hmm. Tyler Perry's promoter, in fact, okay, mm -hmm. had kind of followed our progress and loved what we were doing with kids. We were working with the school districts. Mm -hmm. I had written a play called Succeeding Beyond the Limits about kids who have learning differences. Mm -hmm. And so we were touring that, that play in Dallas Independent School Districts. Mm -hmm. And Arthur said, I really like what you're doing, Teresa. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the keys to this dilapidated building wow. in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we raised a half million dollars in private sector funding. Mm -hmm. We were able to get a construction loan for about a half million dollars. Started renovations in 2000, 2005, mm -hmm. 2006. Completed the renovations in 2008. And so since then, we have been producing a full season of theater performances, jazz concerts, speaker series events, and year-round arts education programs. Wow. So, Teresa, again, for those that are, are viewing and listening, mm -hmm. what's the name of your... It's Bishop Arts Theater. Okay. It is um, under the auspices of Tico Theatrical Productions. That's our nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, but I am the executive artistic director mm -hmm. for the Bishop Arts Theater Center in Dallas, mm -hmm. Texas. And the founder. And the founder. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the founder. So I'm listening to you mm -hmm. and it. Now, you graduated from Albany State. What was your uh, discipline, your major? It was business. Business. Yeah, but I always wanted to work in theater. Uh -huh. I saw Diana Ross in The Wiz, and I know I'm dating myself, <laughs> but I saw Diana <laughs> Ross in The Wiz uh -huh. like years ago, okay. and it, it completely changed how I saw myself. Mm -hmm. um, and my, and uh, quite frankly, it was my, my first love for theater. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the things that I think about often, and of course, I mean, you know, of course, with my husband being a pastor, mm -hmm. you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about your gift making room. That's for right. That's and right. And now I'm listening at you, your That's major. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Your major was business, uh -huh. but because you have been gifted yeah. to write plays and skits, and, and you said you joined this church and you were doing, and, I, and I'm sure you were just a servant to right. the ministry, to the house. Right. You know, they asked you to do it, and you was like, yeah, let me lend my services mm -hmm. to my ministry. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, you have created, I mean, so many opportunities for so many individuals, not to mention, of course, the young people whose right. lives you've touched and impacted. But I'm even saying, for me, I mean, for black women. Yes. You know, I mean, to be a... a, a a black woman from Southwest Georgia, all bitty, <laughs> look, tornado <laughs> graduate. That's right. That's <laughs> you right. know, all bitty state graduate to mm -hmm. have taken that gift that you probably didn't even really know that it would take you to where it's taking you. Right. I mean, that's phenomenal. And I say that because a lot of times people... You know, they think in order to be successful, I've got to go to college and I've got to take this path. But a lot of times, it's just pure passion. It is pure passion. Yeah. But it's also people seeding into you, mm. you know, sowing into you and making sure that you have opportunities that um, that other people have. Mm -hmm. in, in Dallas, I have some wonderful black women mm. who are mentors who have opened doors for me because that's the other thing. I think that we have to realize that none of us are here on our own. Yes. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. I've had wonderful conversations with my parents while I've been here mm -hmm. about some really, you know, things that they didn't, didn't talk about. They haven't shared mm -hmm. with anyone. But I, I realize now that I'm standing on the shoulders of Giants. Yeah. My daddy talked about um, his uncle owning a club in the 19, I think it was the 1940s, downtown. Yes. Yes. Really? That I didn't even know anything about. Uh-huh. 
but we have so Thank many you. entrepreneurs in our, you know, in our family. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so, I think that, that family history is really important it is. also. Mm -hmm. But to your point, yes, um, you know, joining Antioch was one of the best things that happened to me. Thank mm -hmm. God I had the wherewithal to get in a church, find a church home when mm -hmm. I was in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of the, um, I know in fact, a lot of the opportunities that we're experiencing and the success we're experiencing right now is because of the, the training that we had when we were in Atlanta. In Atlanta, absolutely. Mm -hmm. In that church, in uh -huh. Antioch. Uh -huh. And, and, I, and I, I say that too because a lot of times people, they think because they're serving in a ministry or in a church that that's that's the beginning and that's the end. Exactly. You you don't know where that's <laughs> you, gonna take you. You don't know. That's so true. Yeah. 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 You don't know where that's gonna take you. And I remember uh, Mrs. Alexander. You know, she was a fierce businesswoman, mm -hmm. and just watching her with those numbers, making sure that we were profitable. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that the the ministry sustained itself. I paid attention to all of that mm -hmm. because I one of the things that. Uh, we're working on right now is making sure that we create opportunities for generations to come. Right. We don't want the theater to be something that my generation enjoy, but we are really being intentional about training the next generation of, of leaders yeah. and artists so that we can really, really build a, a legacy mm -hmm. in Dallas. Well, and it's important, you know, that that happens. I um, I'm listening to you also when you talk about uh, Mrs. Alexander mm -hmm. and, and the numbers, and you say it earlier. You said we made a lot of mistakes yeah. in the beginning, and and it, that piece is is important also. Um, but you know, Teresa, I look at even the mistakes in which you smiled and you've told me that helped you even with where you are today. Yes, because you made those mistakes. But then because you are willing to avail yourself to others, you know, mentoring and teaching others, the next generation. Right. And some of the things that you had to deal with, mm -hmm. that, those are things that they won't have to face. That's right. And that's the, that's the beauty of having people that are open and willing to seeding into, you know, the next generation. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, it, I don't think it's, it's good enough you know, for us to get all the knowledge. And, you know, I've, and I've met some people that have said, no, I'm not che teaching you everything I know. Okay, but you're not going to be here forever. Right. It's important for you to pour into someone else. Right. And there's a benefit to that because one person can do only so much. Mm -hmm. But when you can create some extensions, then you can get so much more done. Right. And that's why we have to be open to that, even with... This conversation, you know, pretty much centered around uh, blacks in theater and, and, again, women. Because a lot of people, they may be interested in uh, the arts. They may be interested in theater. But just not know, how do I do it? How do I get there? Right. You know, but I, I think when they know, okay, this young lady did it. And that's why I, I wanted to make sure I said, Southwest Georgia, because a lot of times people say, "Oh no, that only happens to people who live in big cities." Exactly. But hey, we're not. You're from. You are born and bred. <laughs> you are a born and bred Albanian. That's right. <laughs> but it's it's interesting you should say that because most of the folks that I know, you know, that I have relationships with uh -huh. in New York, came from some small town. Mm -hmm. New York is made up <laughs> uh -huh. of people from small cities, uh, yeah. you know, small towns like ours, and so. Yeah, I think that that negative talk is what we're accustomed to and we've got to get away from it. Mm -hmm. Somehow that we're not worthy. Right. That mm -hmm. from where we came from, mm -hmm. because of where we came from, or who our parents were, or or, or even what we did. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, I don't mind making mistakes because I know that I'm learning. Mm -hmm. I'm getting closer to what I've learned is that when I make a mistake, I'm getting closer to a solution. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how we learn. That's how we learn. Right? Uh, yeah. Oh, man. I, I tell you, I, I'm inspired because, again, even with this generation, I know with you visiting home, mm -hmm. it was like, what do you all do here? <laughs> Where, <laughs> where's the entertainment? It, but sometimes it takes, even though you're a, a native, yes. but having been gone for, you know, 
a, a decade. Yes. A decade. Or two. <laughs> yeah, a decade. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes it helps to come back with fresh eyes. That's right. And to say, okay, where is this? Uh-huh. You know, and, and even kind of open up the people who are still here, open up our eyes, say, hey, we are missing that. Or, you know, even to appreciate some of the simplicities that are already here. Because, you know, you were sharing with me some of the different areas that you were touring and visiting. Yeah. And, I, and y'all, I'm telling you, I, I'm like, <laughs> that's in all that is? Yeah, but my cousin, you yes. know, has found some jewels yes. here in the city. There's so much history here. Mm-hmm. I mean, five minutes from where my parents live, I told you, it's a plantation. Mm. You know, there are plantations all around this city. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's so much history in the Thronatiska Her- the Thronatiska Heritage mm-hmm. Village. I think that, um, you know, just visiting that part of the city and being a part of that book signing the other day mm-hmm. really opened my eyes to the rich history right. that we have in, 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 in Albany. Now, Albany was an important part of the civil rights movement, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So where is that story and where are the archives and, you know, where are the people who are who are willing to tell those to stories? To tell the story. Yeah. That's true, because even, um, you mentioned about the book signing. I know that uh, Miss Gibson, Angela Gibson, right. the book that she wrote, she came and she actually spoke at our youth service. and She's powerful. She is. She's powerful. And she was mentioning uh, sometimes history states that the civil rights movement was not a success right. in Albany. She mentioned that. Yeah. But she did a great job of explaining, oh, yes, it was, and, and kind of laying the foundation and laying a, a pathway of some of the things that occurred. I mean, even as it relates to calling out certain addresses in certain parts of the city that, I mean, we pass by every day. Right. But just don't know the history behind, you know, this house or this was a safe house for, you know, Martin Luther King. We don't know. Exactly. So you have to have people willing, like you said, to tell the story right. and share the history. Yeah, but we also have to do our research, too, mm. because uh, what I found out is that, you know, the the history of the Leesburg Stockade Girls. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you educated me. Yeah, I'm really excited about about that history and just talking to community, I'm learning that there are things that in order to survive, our people have had to not remember. Mm. But for some of us, I think the healing comes from talking about it and remembering. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's a really fine balance Mm -hmm. that we've got to strike here because what we don't want to do is cause more harm, Right. right? Right. And be respectful of those people who have really gone through a lot of trauma mm-hmm. just to survive in this land. Mm-hmm. So so I'm asking questions about and really doing a lot of research about the history of the land that's so important to mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. because to my point earlier, we, we, we're standing on the shoulders of giants mm-hmm. and I don't think that we really will understand the full story until we uncover all of those truths. Yeah. Right. Right. That happen and embrace our past, embrace who we are, um, and embrace our culture. Mm-hmm. Well, and that pretty much goes back to a conversation you and I had the other day when we we were talking about um, healing yeah. and being willing to open up and share. Right. Because for so long in the African American culture, you know, a certain thing. What what what's the cliche? What happens in this house stays in this stays house. Stays in this house. That's right. And and for so long, things were buried. Mm-hmm. People didn't want to talk about. It. And mind you, some of the things probably were painful right. at that time. But again, in order for the next generation, uh, I believe, to succeed. Sometimes it helps to, hey, tell what happened right. so they don't make the same mistake. Or even so that they can even find pride in it. Because when you think about a lot of the things that we as a black people have experienced, 
Mm -hmm. I mean, dating back to slavery mm -hmm. and forward. You know, you're talking about the plantations that are like right here in Everywhere. our city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just to think about, okay, this is where we came from and a lot of things that we endured, but it still didn't keep us down. That's right. I mean, we're resilient. We bounce back. Yes. You know, I mean, that that's a strength in itself, Teresa. Yeah. yeah. We don't know who we are. That's, that's it. The, the, we don't know who we are. That's it. And that's one of the reasons why I really want to uncover these truths also. Mm. Just to understand, you know, I look at the, the suicide rate of four young people right mm. now. And there was a time when I didn't know anybody who committed suicide. And mm. now every other day, there yeah. are people who are taking their lives. And I'm like... Why is that? Mm -hmm. Why we we need to know who we are and that our ancestors endured so much more mm -hmm. than we endured. And if they can do, can accomplish and exist all the hardships that they went through, surely we can. Absolutely, surely we can. We can we can survive <laughs> and and thrive. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And that's one of the beautiful things that uh, what you do in your profession. Yeah. You are able to bring certain stories to life in picture form. Yeah. I'm visual. And you can talk to me and tell it to me all day. But if I can see it and visualize oh God, it. I'm the same way. You are? I'm the same way. <laughs> it must be these <laughs> genetics. It's true. It's <laughs> our DNA. Yes, yes. Yeah. But to be able to see it, and, and that's what theater does. Mm -hmm. That's what art does. Mm -hmm. You know, it brings thought to reality, mm -hmm. I guess, so others can see and visualize it. And and with what you're doing uh, in the Dallas area, um, I think it's awesome. And so much and so that even coming here and, and opening eyes to, okay, hey, this is what we're doing there. Let's see what we can do here to bridge the gap and, and expose yeah. some of our young people and our people to things that they may not have gotten had they not, you know, I guess, if, if they never left all being right, then that doesn't mean that you still shouldn't have knowledge of this. Right, right. Listen, I know that there are people on both sides of the political spectrum mm -hmm. who attend our jazz concerts. I know mm -hmm. that that happens. I know that there are people who don't look like me and you who attend our theater performances. Mm -hmm. Theater is a way to bring folks together. Right. And in this country, that's what we need more so than anything. Right. I think that our work is more important now than it ever has been. Mm -hmm. I see a tremendous opportunity mm -hmm. when I come to Albany and I see no arts and culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I or very little arts and culture. I see a huge opportunity to bring people together, but also, you know, we say theater is a way to keep kids off the streets in a productive, constructive environment during the extended work day and during mm -hmm. the summer months. And quite frankly, we've got more funding for our, you know, our arts education programs than anything. Mm -hmm. More than our sold out jazz concerts, more than our avant-garde, you know, theater performances. When folks see what we're doing to really train the next generation of leaders. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's powerful and it's transformative. And we've been in business long enough to know that we have a track record. Yeah. You know, there are kids who have gone off to school, gotten degrees, and came back to work for the theater. My son is a vivid example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, we have kind of a case study in our own house. Okay. So we know the power of the arts. Mm -hmm. We know that the arts can be incredibly uh, healing and transformative. And I really think that our nation needs needs the work that we're doing. Yeah, we, we definitely need it. Yeah. So, Teresa, uh, I know we've covered a lot, but of course we probably haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but is there anything else that you uh, would like to mention or 
uh, say before we end the podcast? I mean, I would just invite uh, your listening audience and your viewing audience mm-hmm. to Dallas to to witness the work that we're doing. But you know what? Um, I would also say this. I would say uh, to anyone who's interested in pursuing a career in the arts, is just start where you are. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the universe meets us where we are, and um, I, I really believe that God would open doors, put the people, the right people in our pathway mm-hmm. to make sure that we are successful when we get out the way. I will tell you this, that I naively got in this business thinking I would write and produce all of my plays. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really about me. Mm-hmm. What I do now more so, more so than anything else is create opportunities for other artists. Mm-hmm. And so I think that um, once your mission is aligned with God's mission, yes. you know, um, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you. I certainly do. Um, I would like to say again, I thank you again for thank coming you on for having me. And and you mentioned about us standing on the shoulders of giants. Yes, uh, this is uh, one of uh, my uh, first opportunities to uh, have this podcast with a cousin. And for those of you that don't know, I'll tell you, uh, Teresa's grandmother, which was. Marie Edward Scott. That's right. Is my mother, Sophronia Edwards Carter's oldest sister. Mm-hmm. So Teresa's grandmother was the eldest of 15 children, and my mother is the youngest of 15 children. Our grandparents were Louise and George Edwards. Teresa is the, are you the, you're the second. I'm the middle child. You're the middle. She's uh-huh. the middle child uh-huh. of our oldest cousin, mm-hmm. which is Dory Coleman. Right. I don't, I don't, yeah. Okay. Right. Dur- Dory Coleman, which is the oldest cousin on my mother's side. And Teresa is her middle child. So just a little history wanted you all to know. Some of you out in our listening and viewing audience uh, may can draw the connection. You may see somewhat of a resemblance. <laughs> but just to let you all know that if it had not been for even those ladies, that's right, we would not be here today. And because we, too, were reared in God-fearing homes and we were taught the importance of loving God and respecting our elders and, and putting... Uh, God first and, and loving uh, family, mm-hmm. cherishing family, that we're able to be here today to share this podcast. So I know this is a little different. I've never done this before, but I wanted you to know that because, again, I'm thankful for my mom. I know Teresa's thankful for her mom, her grandmother, and all of our aunts and uncles that are still here. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. And we love you. And we love you, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you for joining us on another episode of Amazing Conversations. I am your host, Andrea Rebels. Thank you. Have a great evening.